Hey, what's going on, guys? It's Rob from Heroes Avenue. Happy Friday. We have some things to talk about in regards to this Batman movie, and I know we've been talking a lot about it lately, but it's all been really exciting for both me and Darren, who are huge Batman fans, and uh, we got to talk about it. So here we go. So uh, there's some things that we know about this uh, Batman movie. We know that Matt Reeves has said it's going to be focusing on the detective aspect of the Batman, something that hasn't been really highlighted in previous Batman iterations, and it is going to feature a rogues gallery of villains. And um, we might have a little bit more information about who exactly these villains will be. And again, file this under rumors for now, even though there are multiple trades re reporting these, uh, these villains as well. So. Uh, let's get into it. So first, we're going to talk about some of these articles, then speculate on what kind of stories we're going to get from this uh, this movie, or what kind of story we're going to get from this movie, uh, given uh, the villains that may be involved. Okay, so let's get into it. First article I'm looking at is Cinema Blend, and it's titled, this article is, All the Batman Villains Rumored to Show Up in Matt Reeves' DC Movie. Um, and uh, the first villain on here is the Penguin. Now, uh, it's been a while since we've seen the penguin on the big screen. I know we got him in this uh, in the Batman TV, the the what is it, the prequel TV show that's going on right now, Gotham. Uh, I don't really follow Gotham to be honest, um, but the last time I saw him on the big screen was in 1992, portrayed by uh, what was his name, Danny DeVito, and it. He, I actually really enjoyed that movie, and. Um, I wasn't incredibly excited to hear about the Penguin being involved in this movie. I know um, some people are really big fans of the Penguin, but uh, it's, not, it's not one of those sexy villains that you want to see, at least for me personally. But uh, one reason that uh, fans might be excited for it or maybe potentially were excited for it is because it might serve as connective tissue to the Justice League version of Batman that we got from Ben Affleck. Of course, uh, Alfred went on to reference the Penguin in uh, Justice League, talking about exploding penguins. and because this movie's kind of a prequel and we're getting the Penguin in the movie, we all thought, hey, maybe this is connecting to the Batman and Justice League. And while I don't think it's not connecting to it, I don't think it's also trying to connect a uh, creative connective tissue with that universe as we know that DC lately has been trying to distance itself from uh, the previous DC movies. Whether you like it or not, I, I enjoyed all the previous DC or the DC movies that we have right now, especially you know Man of Steel, BVS, all the Snyder, all the Snyder's work. Um, but they seem to be trying to distance themselves from it. And some of you guys are happy, some of you guys aren't for it, but that's what's happening. So we got the Penguin. And uh, we got Catwoman, and rumored to be show up too. And we've also seen Catwoman twice on the big screen. Um, first time with Michelle Pfeiffer, and I think that was Batman Returns. And then, of course, 2012's Dark Knight Rises. And Hathaway was great. I'm excited to see Catwoman portrayed once again because I think she is just a, uh, she's just such a uh, integral figure of in, in Batman's, uh, in Batman's character as a character and his universe and I think Catwoman would be uh, it, there's still a lot to explore in regards to this character so that's good so the Riddler again the Riddler we haven't seen since oh man what is that 1996 or 7 and Jim Carrey uh, portrayed the Riddler not the biggest fan of that movie though I did enjoy it as a kid I was a kid back then when uh, the Riddler showed up on the big screen but hey I'm excited to see Edward Nigma back on the big screen and I want to see how Matt Reeves incorporates him if he is to be involved and um, rumors are that he might be one of the, the big bads in this movie as well so um, so the Riddler of course you know I don't want to see the crazy Jim Carrey aspect I'd rather see um, and I talked about this in a previous video if we can get um, if we can get uh, the guy who played uh, Professor X, James McAvoy. If we can get him to play uh, a version of the Riddler, ooh, that's my dream casting right there. It would be awesome. Um, so, yeah, I'm excited to see this. And I think being this being a detective movie, it would, it would make sense that the Riddler is involved. So, again, we'll get more into what we think the story is going to be like in a second. And uh, we got Firefly. Now, um, Firefly is someone we've never seen on the big screen. So, that would be an incredible... That would be incredible to see, and I would imagine that he's going to be a really, uh, uh, maybe not the most significant villain in the movie, but will play a part possibly early on in the movie. Um, I would liken it to uh, uh, someone, the way they treated Victor Zaz in the Dark Knight trilogy. Probably not really involved at all, but we'll see. Um, we got Two-Face. Two-Face, we've seen Two-Face twice before with Tommy Lee Jones, and I forget the actor who played Two-Face so uh, perfectly in the Dark Knight I forget his name, but uh, he's a great actor and he has been portrayed very well. Uh, of course, 
you know, um, I would love to see Two-Face again. He's just such an iconic Batman villain, um, though I, I hope he is not the big focus of this next movie. Um, as we do know, Matt Reeves is making a trilogy of movies, so hopefully he can be used some more later, a little bit uh, more. But, uh, and then we got the Mad Hatter. Ooh, I'm excited for this one. We've never seen the Mad Hatter on the big screen before. The idea of a brilliant scientist who uses technology to mind control people sounds incredibly intriguing to me. And uh, I haven't read a ton of uh, Mad Hatter stories. I've seen him in stories, or I've read him in uh, stories as a smaller character, but um, just just playing the Arkham Knight games and being able to experience the Mad Hatter's portion of that game gives me, a, you know, it, it just excites me a lot to see what might be potentially uh, come to a big screen in regards to this character. So I'm really excited that, Matt, that the Mad Hatter might be involved. Um, and if we get uh, confirmation of all these characters, then we'll definitely do more videos on these characters too. But so, oh, that, that was six villains. So check it out. So that was Cinema Blend talking about the six villains that we may uh, get in this movie. And then um, we got this covered again. Uh, have have doing more breaking uh, rumors, or not breaking, but 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 busting out more rumors. And they're saying that um, this film will actually may potentially include more than the six villains that are involved. And again, that sounds that sounds nuts. You know, six villains are they going to are they going to shortchange a lot of the villains? And again, I think this is a. I think while that is definitely a big risk of including this many characters, I think what's happening is Matt Reeves is probably trying to flesh out a whole universe um, for his trilogy, and I, if that's what he's doing, that sounds super awesome. Um, I'm not really worried about, as at this point. I know some people might be, um, but it, it just sounds all exciting at this point. So um, we got this covered. Says yes, it might be including uh, more than one villain, and they are also saying here's what they're saying about the movie the plot of the movie okay we're gonna get into the plot they're saying in short the film the film uh, will be a murder mystery which takes cues from Batman the long Halloween a 13 issue comic book limited series written by Jeff Loeb art by Tim sale um, and it says what from what we understand the plot will be a serial killer loose in Gotham City and Bruce Wayne taking it upon himself to track down the lunatic and put an end to his murderous rampage along the way he'll investigate Many of his biggest foes, the Penguin, Catwoman, Riddler, are said to be primary antagonists with, uh, uh, of the piece, while folks like the Mad Hatter and Two-Face will play smaller roles. So, and they also go on to say, they've heard from two different sources, it could be Hush, but neither would confirm 100%. There you go. So therein lies the question. If you clicked on this video and saw the thumbnail, you saw... We got Robert Pattinson on the side, we got the hush in the middle, and then we got the long Halloween on the side of the picture. So two beloved stories, um, two stories written by Jeff Loeb, um, two stories that most uh, readers, uh, two stories that if you're just jumping into Batman, those are probably one of the two stories that people will say, hey, go read these stories. And, and um, it makes a lot of sense why you would go to do that. So the question is, um, oh, and sorry, in the article, they go on to say that there may be a, one of the articles on We Got Discovered say there may be a huge villain twist as well. So Matt Reeves is not going to create a story in which um, it's just a, kind of a, uh, you know, kind of a simple, uh, it's not gonna be a one dimensional simple story. There is gonna be a twist involved. And of course, twists are great if done well in these movies. And uh, I would, so here's here's time to speculate. Is, is he going to be adapting uh, more of the Hush storyline, um, given how these two, uh, Hush and Long Halloween, um, tend to focus on a detective side of Batman, or yeah, or is he going to do the Long Halloween? Uh, you know, two beloved stories, two stories that I absolutely love. Um, man, that is the question, and it's 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 two things, it's two stories. I wouldn't be mad at either one if he chose to do. But uh, so quickly, if you have not. Uh, if you have not read Hush, just a quick summary. It's a story that depicts a mysterious stalker called Hush, who seems intent on sabotaging Batman from afar. It includes a large number of guest appearances from Batman villains, various members of the Bat family, Batman's ally and Superman even comes into there. But really, I think the most intriguing part of this story is that it does explore the relationship between Catwoman and Batman and a potential romantic relationship between them. 
Though, um, just to spoil things a little bit, it doesn't quite work out in the end, but it does explore, it does explore that uh, connection, the connection between them two um, a lot. So the reason why this this story might be adapted is one because it, it does, in, as the as the uh, leaks or, uh, or the rumors suggest, going to be a lot of Batman villains in in this Hush storyline. They're they throw literally all of Batman's rogues gallery, as far as I can tell. Not all of them, but a lot of them. They throw them at your face, and they make an appearance some in some form or fashion. Um, and it's all from Batman trying to um, figure out who this guy is. And um, it turns out to be a new Batman villain, someone that's something that's very hard to do in the world of uh, comics, in which, especially for Batman, it is because he has such a long history of his rogues gallery that they tend to be reused a lot. And um, for Jeff Loeb to create this new type of villain, uh, that was something very difficult. And to have a new type of villain be the big bad on screen would be really, really awesome because I think it's something that fans like, you know, fans, general fans know all of the, the rogues gallery. Uh, of Batman's villains, they've they've seen them before. They've seen them in you know old TV shows back in the day. They've seen them seen them on Target T-shirts and things like that. But uh, to see Hush, that'll be a new villain for the mainstream audiences. But if you have read the story, you know there is kind of a twist at the end regarding uh, the Riddler and the Riddler kind of being the guy behind the scenes after all. So it, I don't want to. I'm not gonna you know go into detail about the whole story. But it's been a while since I read both of these stories. But uh, yeah, that could be another way the Riddler works his way into this story as well. So interesting. So let's, you know, talking about to summer and summarizing the Long Halloween. Again, Long Halloween, I think this, I think I like this story more than the, the Hush story. Um, it takes place during Batman's early days of crime fighting. The Long Halloween tells the story of a mysterious killer named Holiday and who murders people on holidays one each month working with district attorney harvey dent and james gordon batman races against the calendar as he tries to discover who holiday is before he claims his next victim each month while attempting to stop the crime war between two of gotham city's most powerful families the moroni and falcone families so this story is just incredible it was just such an incredibly told story the reason why i love this story so much is not only because it includes this mob uh mob war aspect of of, of this uh, of of gotham but it it interweaves that with a new batman trying to figure out who this mysterious killer is the mob the mobsters you know uh they hire some of the you know batman's most iconic villains so they get involved there's just layers and layers upon um great things and surprising things that happen some twists in this movie and there is a creepy aspect about who is this killer um and um and again it's been a while since i read it but just going from my memory um it, it has one of the most beloved origins of harvey dent's of harvey dent two-face and um i just there's just so many layers to this and of course catwoman's involved and uh, from the rumors as the rumors suggest the harvey dent's involved so all the people that are pretty much in uh in the news articles that are saying, hey, these are might be the six villains. Most of them are in these stories, um, minus Firefly. And uh, yeah, it just sounds super awesome. If I had to guess on what uh, what the story is or what it's gonna take inspiration from, I'd have to say it's probably gonna take inspiration from both. I wouldn't be surprised if he takes this Hush character and, and, and injects him into this long Halloween type story. Um, you know, we've seen that done in the past. You know, Snyder did it with BVS. You know, a lot of you guys on this channel, follow this channel, love BVS. Some of you guys don't, that's cool. It's all your opinion. Um, I happen to really like it and enjoy it. But, um, you know, we've seen, uh, movies uh take two stories and kind of put them into one movie i'm not saying it's the best way to go about doing things but i wouldn't be surprised if he takes this new character of hush and this this new character is involved and he kind of incorporates elements of the long halloween in which a character or or, or there is a murder on a holiday of each month because that just really i think the long halloween uh more so than hush really brings out the detective side of batman um, and we, we do know that this is what Matt Reeves wants to go for versus the story of Hush in which uh, he's really trying to find out who the, the stalker person is, creating all this chaos surrounding him. And he doesn't, things kind of just seem to fall in his lap in the Hush stories and he comes to come across it. I don't think he really figures a lot of the stuff out um, as, as much as, as he does figure out what's going on in the long Halloween story, if that makes any sense at all. Um, but yeah, two of my favorite stories. I do think that he's gonna take elements from both, and I do think there may be a surprise twist in that 
Um, either he might switch around the twist in Hush, where Hush ends up being the major villain behind everything, or it could be the Riddler. Yeah, I, either way, I do think the Riddler or Hush are two, two of the guys who may be the big villains in this movie. Um, I'm really excited to see how many actual villains are going to be included and uh, if he's going to include all these villains, is he going to incorporate any of the Bat family? I don't know. I'm um, really excited uh, for this movie. And again, all of this is speculation right now, just giving us reasons to talk about this Batman movie, which I'm not going to shoot till early 2020. So let me know what you guys think about this news. Um, how excited are you guys for this Batman movie and which storyline do you think Matt Reeves will be adapting? Thank you guys for watching. If you guys did enjoy this video, please give it a like. Subscribe if you haven't already. Stay tuned for updates about a giveaway we're going to do for people in the Bay Area who are following us. And I will catch you guys later. Peace. Yeah.